So the picture in front of you is where we stopped with the last video where we added the vectors A and B together graphically. So I drew a picture of A, I drew a picture of B, and then I drew a picture of the resultant vector C. Uh, in this video, we're going to work the same problem, uh, but instead of doing it graphically, we're going to do it algebraically. And we will use the picture that I've drawn here to make sure that we're correct and to try to give you a little bit of intuition about um, you know how the graphical portions of this and the algebraic portions of it work together. So let me go to a clean sheet. Uh, let me excuse me rewrite my vectors. I've got vector a is equal to five i hat plus three j hat. As I said in the last video, uh, very often and when if you're in class with me. I will just say 5i or 3j. I'm going to try to remember in these videos to say i hat, j hat, because I realize it's new and we're just learning. But after you get there, it's not a big deal to just say 5i plus 3j. We all do it. Uh, vector b then was, what was it, minus 2i hat plus 1j hat. I'm going to leave off the 1 as a coefficient. We all uh, can see, or hopefully we can see that uh, there's an implied one here, right? One times anything is just that thing, so it's not a big deal if I don't write the one. And what I'm interested in here is the vector sum a plus b. And I know I've already called my resultant vector c. So here the question is, what is c? What is the algebraic form of c? Now, if I have the picture in front of me, I can just uh, you know figure out how far it moves in the x direction, how far it moves in the y direction, and what are the signs on those, and just write it down. But if I don't have a picture in front of me, and very often you won't, and you may maybe don't have time or materials to draw a pretty picture and be really careful with how you do it, uh, this is the more, uh, or not more, but this is the algebraic way to do it. So the key to vector addition is to remember that uh, components add with like components. In other words, i hats add together with other i hats and only with other i hats. J hats add together with other j hats and only with other j hats. Later, when we do uh, vector multiplication, there are two different kinds of vector mul multiplication we'll look at. Um, things work a little bit differently in those situations, but for addition, we're only going to let like components add together. So then you can see what's going on here. If I'm going to add the like components, I'm going to add, let me get a, let me get a different color here. I'm going to add the i hats here to the i hats here. And similarly, I'm going to add the j hats here to the j hats here. And at this point, it's just algebra, right? So I can say that c vector, the resultant, is equal to 5i hat, sorry, not, 5i hat minus 2i hat, and I'm going to put that in parentheses, plus another set of parentheses, 3j hat, that's a terrible looking 3, let me fix that, 3j hat plus just the 1j hat. Okay? And so, I can uh, I, I can probably skip the step of factoring out the i from the first parentheses, factoring out the j from the second parentheses, and just adding the coefficients. I think I can skip that step. If not, I would encourage you to do it. Just write this down, take out the i's, you get 5 minus 2 in parentheses times i hat, etc., etc. Um, I always do this. I say I'm going to skip it, and then I explain it. So I will really skip it. What I get out of this is 3 i hat plus, sorry, equals, 3i hat plus 4j hat. And that is my graphical, sorry, my algebraic ref representation of the vector c, the resultant vector of a plus b. 3i hat plus 4j hat, which means c moves over 3 units in the x direction and up 4 units in the y direction. Now here's the real test. I've already done this problem graphically. Let's go look at the graph, we'll go look at the picture, and make sure that C really is 3i hat plus 4j hat. I'm pretty confident in my, in my arithmetic here, but let me just go check. So let's look and find out. 
So, C, look, I'm going over. Let me get a, uh, a yet a different color. I'm running out of colors. Uh, we'll go with purple. I'm going over three, uh, three units in the X direction, and then up one, two, three, four units in the Y direction. So, C, I count over three I hat, three units in the X direction, plus four units in the y direction. Let's see if that's what I got. And it is 3i plus 4, sorry, 3i hat plus 4j hat. So that's two different ways of doing it, graphically and algebraically. Graphically is fine, but for the purposes of this course and pretty much uh, every other engineering physics course you're going to take, probably every calculus and uh, um, diffeq and definitely linear algebra course you're going to take, the algebraic form is going to be much more useful to you. You can also get some information out of this immediately. You can get the uh, the length of C by using the Pythagorean theorem. You can get the slope of C. You can get the angle that C makes with the with the x-axis from the tangent. You can get the uh, angle that C makes with the y-axis, for that matter. It, you know, just by rearranging your tangent, um, you can just pull a lot of information immediately uh, from this algebraic representation. So. The algebraic form is much more useful, and it's not bad, right? The key is just remembering that like components add to like components. I hats only add with I hats. J hats only add with J hats. And after that, it's just arithmetic. If you keep tra if you're a good bookkeeper, if you keep track of which coefficients go with your I hat, which coefficient coefficients go with your J hats, uh, it's just arithmetic. Okay. Hope this makes sense. I will talk to you in the next video.